Well, this case today is going to take us to Anchorage, Alaska, and it's known for being cold and for its beauty. Anchorage might appear at first glance to be a typical American city, but closer exploration shows some surprising urban life in Alaska. With sites over 1,500 moose, residents share their space within their own backyard. Not to mention bald eagles, bears, beavers, doll sheep, and even the occasional lynx king. And for lovers that love fishing, salmon are in Sheep Creek all summer long. A 52-year-old from South Africa man had made Anchorage, Alaska his home. It was in September 30th, 2019. It was at 4.06 p.m. There was a 911 call made to the Anchorage police. A woman named Valerie Kessler, who stole his cell phone from his truck, had discovered a gruesome footage from 2019 on it. She was a sex worker and a dread addict. She took his phone to sell it. However, this man who tortured an Alaska native woman and he narrated it, he recorded the video of her dying in what looked like a hotel room. Now this woman did recognize the carpet and it was from the Midtown Marriott. Valerie, at the time, had accepted the ride from this man. He did have a strong English accent. He's never seen in any of the videos. He was holding the camera and the woman was being strangled. In one of the videos, she's fighting back and she's scratching at him, trying to get him to stop. He said that his hand was getting tired, so he started to stomp on her neck, saying she needed to die. He was laughing and making noises and telling her, we're going on for an hour now. And there's obviously a lot more very graphic to hear her moan and pain being savagely killed on camera. Now this woman is deceased. She was being rolled in a hotel cart near a black pickup truck covered with a sheet. Then he put her in his truck. Now the dates on the videos and images were from 4th of September 2019. So about less than a month before the card was taken from his truck from Valerie. There was also this on his phone, too. There through those trees, you'll see the doctor's house. He's a, like a heart surgeon or brain surgeon or something. There's the other neighbors. And there's the tree in front of the house. And there's the other neighbors. Um, there's like a, a, a man and two women living there. I don't know what's going on, but it sounds interesting. Oh, okay. Uh, that there is Vicky's house. It's and freezing out here. I'm walking here in this frozen shit. And there's a car. Magnet number two. On October 2nd at 9.15 in the morning, the police were called once again on mild post 108 of the Seaward Highway, about 20 minute drive from where Valerie had taken this phone from his truck. There was human remains found in the bushes just off the highway. She'd likely been there for a while. The police were able to identify the man from the video after recognizing him from a separate incident in an investigation, in part because of his accent. 
His name was Brian Smith. He was from South Africa. He had checked in as a guest and he took room 322. Now, Brian Smith happened to have stayed there from September 2nd to the 4th, also obtained a warrant for his cell phone, and it pinged at the same location where the body was found. One day, the grand jury returned indictments for a first named victim. Those charges included murder, sexual assault, tampering with physical evidence, at that point, we asked the grand jury to make a special finding regarding substantial torture. That special finding that the grand jury made, if Mr. Smith is convicted, um, and that finding is upheld by the sentencing judge, could subject him to a mandatory minimum 99-year sentence. Now, the name of this victim was released on the 10th of October, it was a 30-year-old Kathleen Joe Henry. Kathleen Henry was born December 22, 1988 in Bethel, Alaska. She had obtained her GED in 2019 while incarcerated in Anchorage, Alaska. She was a divorcee who was single and she had struggled with addiction and had criminal run-ins with the law over the years. She was a frequent user on Facebook and other social media. She enjoyed writing poetry and she was well loved by her family. She was described herself as a tough Alaska chick since 1997 to present. She was active on her social media right up to five days before her death. It seemed like she was getting her life together. She was excited about the future. The day the police were notified about the SD card, Smith was vacationing in Virginia at the time with his wife. They flew out of Anchorage. On October 8th, he flew back to Ted Stevens International Airport. He was due to start a new job at the Residence Inn. It was another hotel operated by the Marriott. He did not work at the Marriott that had the crime scene. He was arrested at the airport and charged with murder. Are your name and date of birth correct on there? 48 year old Brian Stephen Smith. Uh, that about $2,000. An immigrant from South Africa is charged with her murder. Police met Smith at the airport as he returned to Anchorage from a trip. They say Smith is on that side of the courtroom glass today because a woman found an SD card with evidence on it and turned it in to APD. Had the citizen not called us after she found the video card, we would not have been able to solve this crime as quickly as we did. Brian Stephen Smith was born on March 23rd, 1971. He was born in South Africa in the Queenstown area. He later immigrated to the U.S. Brian became a U.S. citizen in September of 2019. This is the the beaver dam it it was made by ancient beavers a thousand years ago uh, you can still see the burial grounds over there um, I'm speaking shit you know that <laughs> anyway it's an actual beaver dam there's I don't know if this GoPro can pick it up, but there's a little beaver house over there. Very pretty out here. It actually looks prehistoric. Prehistoric with a capital P. Not a whole lot is known about Brian. He was married to Stephanie at the time of his arrest. They had met via online gaming. They fell in love later, married in 2014. After knowing each other only seven months, that same year in 2014, they both moved to Alaska. You see how the mother has disappeared? She took two steps and she's actually gone now. Yeah, but, but you can hardly oh, see her, you know? Picture. This is the worst wild animal, yeah. <laughs>
He had went to Queens College High School, operated a guest house in South Africa. According to friends, he was dreaming of owning his own hotel one day. Stephanie, her passion was music, which she did pay the bills as an administrative officer at the U.S. Immigration's office. She later said she was totally unaware of what he was accused of doing. I think about that, I think, um, how could I have missed it? How can you miss something like that, you know? I've never seen anything that dark in him. Brian had no criminal record. He did serve in the military in South Africa. He worked at Alaska Tire Service, a Dell engineer, and the Marriott of the University Lake. Then he was going to start his new job in 2019. He was living with his wife and their cat in a quiet neighborhood in the Geneva Woods. He was a pretty quiet guy, according to others who knew him. He did have a YouTube channel where he would upload many videos about his life in Alaska and all of his travels. You can get closer because you can get away. He can't get down there that fast. You know what? The mommy can come down and kick my ass. Yeah. Hello, kitty. Oh, you like that lichen, do you? Hey, that's Stephanie's roses. Also, he had a Cora account, and his questions on Cora mainly resolved of him basically going on about race relations and his huge fan of GTA Vice City. His wife Stephanie said that leading up to the murder, she had not noticed anything wrong at all. She never suspected anything. Police spent 12 hours searching the couple's home. Among the items they collected, electronics and handfuls of SD cards. So I guess that's what what they are. Mm -hmm. And I don't use them, but I don't have cameras. And, and uh, they didn't take this. So they've been taking yeah. weapons, knives, guns. Yeah, my computer and his laptop. All of it bewildering for Bisland, whose husband, a standout hotel employee and new citizen, seemed to have so much going for him. According to Stephanie, that they both wanted to take a break apart for a few days. So he had checked into the Marriott in Midtown in room 322 and he used his employee discount. This is the same room that he made the video of him murdering Kathleen. Brian's wife, Stephanie, would say he had a lot of SD cards in the house and he had a lot of camera equipment also. Just a couple days after the murder, on September 7th, he had placed an ad on Facebook selling his computer and his drone. Smith letting his lawyer do the talking. Do all these will waive reading of the charges and advisement of rights and enter not guilty plea and ask for a jury trial. What could Smith have thought looking out into the courtroom and seeing this? 
a silent but powerful show of force that missing and murdered indigenous women will not be forgotten. Then, after his arrest, Brian finally admitted to another murder. It was another Alaska Native woman whose body had been found earlier, but was misidentified. Her name was Veronica Abuchak, who died on September 4th of 2019. He had shot her and then he disposed of her body. Police showed him a picture of her and he did admit it was her. Also, he told them that the reason that he shot her was that she would not go to the bathroom and clean up that she smelled. On the fifth floor of an Anchorage courthouse, so much love on a day of so much hurt. They've spent time um, searching for VRA, and um, now that they have some answers, they're still left with many uh, questions unanswered. VRA is Veronica Abouchek, identified by police as a second known victim of Brian Smith, seen here in a picture taken a few years ago by her sister. Veronica had been missing in July 2018, but was not reported until February of 2019. She was homeless and her remains have been found before he had confessed and told them where to find her body. It remained an unsolved case until Brian finally admitted to it. The last face they saw is believed to be 48-year-old Brian Stephen Smiths, an immigrant from South Africa who became a U.S. citizen just last month. Enter police of not guilty. According to court documents, he's confessed to both of the killings. In a news conference today, Anchorage's deputy district attorney announced a grand jury has indicted Smith on a total of 13 felony charges for both killings. Charges of murder, sexual assault, evidence tampering, along with a misdemeanor charge of misconduct involving a corpse. Now, according to court documents, Brian had admitted to the murders, dumping the bodies, also admitting of the video and pictures of the murders of Kathleen. Brian Smith previously admitted to committing both murders and the interrogation on October 8th of 2019, which was played for the jury during the trial. Still, Smith pleaded not guilty to all the charges. A jury found Brian Smith guilty of murder. A 30-year-old Kathleen Joe Henry and 52-year-old Veronica Avichek, two Native women who died on September 4th of 2019 and August 2018, respectively. Brian Stephen Smith was found guilty on all 14 criminal counts, including first and second degree murder, tampering with evidence, and sexual assault in the deaths of both of these women. The jury also found him guilty of aggravated factor substantial physical torture. Applies to Smith counts of first degree murder in the murder of Kathleen Joe Henry. Investigators found additional devices in Smith's home containing deleted images and videos of Veronica Avichuk's murder. Now Smith is facing a life sentence for these murders. Brian Smith had preyed on vulnerable homeless women. Brian had picked up Valerie from her temporary housing when she stole his phone from his truck while he was trying to get money from the ATM. Without her, he might have never even got caught. And many other vulnerable homeless women would have fall prey to his gruesome physical torture. And as for Brian's wife, Stephanie, she said that she will stand by her man even after she heard the testimony and the videos of him saying in my movies, everyone dies. <laughs>